Producing more food with less or fewer resources is the challenge. Coupled with the environmentally friendly use of the land to be able to meet the demand is also something for which we need to plan. By the year 2050, the USDA predicts that farmers will need to produce twice as much food to feed 9 billion people. How are we going to do this? Emerging technology is one of the most significant factors that can help the American farmer meet the demands of the world. Scientific research and applied technology has always had a hand in the way that farmers have adapted to the increasing food demand. Current techniques of maximizing efficiency of farming practices help family farms thrive. Auto guidance and steering utilize GPS technology to accurately steer the tractor, sprayer, or harvester for the farmer during the planting, fertilizing, and harvesting phases of production. This technology reduces overlap and allows for pinpoint accuracy of seed placement and fertilizer down to the inch. The main benefit to me for the auto steer is the reduced operator fatigue. At the end of the day, you're not nearly as tired. It has reduced the stress of being having to drive the tractor straight. We don't have to have our hands on the steering wheel. I have two children and it has allowed me to take time off to go to their ball games. We can have the kids and the tractors with us and do schoolwork. It's not complicated, it's just simple. Grid sampling is another scientific approach to the best practices in the field. Now this technique takes numerous samples from the field and attaches GPS coordinates to each of those samples. Those samples are sent away and analyzed in the laboratory. The lab results are then downloaded into a geographic information system and a prescription is created for each area of the field. Our operations utilize grid sampling for several years now and that, that procedure is done by going out in the field. Doesn't matter what size the field is, you break it down into two and a half acre grids. That's all GPS. At that point, you pull soil samples from that area to figure out what nutrients are in the soil. They provide a prescription, which provides the rates that we get then on a card or USB drive, stick it in on one of the monitors in the tractor, and it uh, varies the rate as we travel across the field. So by doing these grid samples, they're two and a half acre grids, we can precisely place N, P, and K, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium where they need to be. This particular two and a half acre grid may need more nitrogen but less phosphorus and potassium. While the grid sampling report offers the farmer information on where to apply different nutrients to the soil, the use of auto swath makes a huge difference in planting, fertilizing, and pesticide applications. Auto swath turns on and off the individual rows or sections of the machine based on where it has already been to reduce the seed fertilizer and chemical inputs. This is an especially useful tool for oddly shaped fields. With the use of auto swath, which shuts the row units or the sprayer off as it is traveling across ground that's already been treated, we've been able to reduce our chemical usage by at least 10 to 15 percent. A personal advantage to the farmer is the cost savings. The swath control is, is an amazing savings, especially when you have a lot of odd shaped fields, point rows. All those savings not only save my pocketbook, but it also is beneficial for the environment. Variable rate drives are an advancement in agricultural technology that automatically respond to the ground speed of your planter, applicator, and sprayer, which gives the grower the ability to apply different rates in different areas of the field automatically based off of their prescriptions. These are what we use for rate control instead of a hydraulic drive, and then they also work as a clutch as well, so you don't have to have row clutches. It, I mean, it just makes everything more seamless. With the use of variable rate fertilizer, we've been able to reduce our fertilizer by at least 25 to 30 percent. Planting at the right population is one thing, but by monitoring singulation, we can monitor, correct, and record our plant spacing. This ensures that we plant every seed at an even spacing to gain the most production without using any more resources. With running those meters for three years, 98.5 percent of the time, we're 99 percent better on our singulation. I mean, it's huge when you can get that kind of performance year in and year out. Automatic downforce control assures that the seed is properly placed at the optimum depth in the soil and that there are as few missed opportunities as possible. When we pull out of a field, we know that that, that planter pass was the absolute best it could have been planted at that time. The combination of all these improvements has really added to the bottom line of our farming operation. Outside forces such as rainfall, temperature, wind, compaction of the soil, and the rolling terrain of some of our fields give the farmer an added challenge of applying the right amount of fertilizer to the crop. 
Sonar sensors are now available to measure the distance to the plant from the applicator and adjust the height of the application in real time, helping to reduce drift in wind and rolling terrain. Optical sensors can measure the crop health and change the rate of fertilizer to what is needed for the crop as the applicator goes through the field. Everything is tracked. You can go out and check all of the nutrient levels that were pulled from the soil sample. We've got wonderful yield maps. Every pass that we do is recorded and read into our GIS software or SMS so that we can then recall it and look at it whenever we want. Being able to keep all that data organized and be able to recall it as easy as you can is huge for the data management aspect of it and being able to find answers. I mean, that's the whole thing is that we need to find answers for why things happen in our fields. If we can solve it, we want to try to solve it. I have to truly believe that the changes we've made and what we've found out by sorting through our data is huge. Uh, the public perception is farmers just want to be out there and get rich. They don't care about the environment. The ironic thing that most people or a lot of people don't realize is what is good for the environment is also good for my pocketbook. It's not beneficial to my pocketbook or is it beneficial to the environment to go out and waste chemical fertilizer, chemical herbicides. We eat those same foods and we drink the same water, so we want it to be safe also. Data, automation, GPS-directed technology, and education are just some of the ways how the farmer is adapting to the world today to meet the needs of tomorrow. Producing more food with environmentally friendly practices is how our world will overcome the challenges we face. Farmers are leading the way through science and technology to keep us all fed.